and welcome to a spooky edition of Puppet News Update. I am your host, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> Hello. I am your host, Irma Jean Newsletter, and I am dressed as a diva, just like Dragon. She wishes she were this fashionable and fabulous. <laughs> anyway. Next week, because of the holiday, we will be taking the week off from our Puppet News Update. So this week is when we shall get in all of our spooky surprises. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about Halloween. Everyone already knows about Halloween. We are going to talk about four holidays leading up to Halloween, wherein we can celebrate and be spooky in a variety of ways. First up is International Artists Day on the 25th. Now, I know what you're thinking. How is an artist spooky? Well, let me tell you. Artists can use their gifts to create art in fabulous ways, including with makeup and costumes, along with the traditional things such as sculpting and drawing and painting. So we shall be looking at a variety of art styles. <laughs> Can't wait. Then after that, Wolf and his good friend Buddy will be showing us how to howl at the moon for Howl at the Moon Night on the 12th. 26th. He shall be leading us in a group howl. If we're fortunate, maybe we can get all the neighborhood dogs involved. <laughs> then it's National Tell a Story Day on the 27th. And what better kind of story to tell than ghost stories? Dragon will be leading us and telling us some spooky stories in the dark. Then last but not least, Mischief Night is the night before Halloween. Traditionally, this is when all the spooks come out and do their tricks. But we shall be trying to do nice sorts of mischief because, you know, we don't want to encourage any kind of delinquency. <laughs> Last up, we'll have birthdays and that'll be it for this week. And you will be off to do your week of spooky celebrating leading up to a very safe pandemic Halloween. <laughs> so without further ado... International Artists Day. Ooh. Ho, 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 ho. Hello, I am Juan Tiburon, star of stage and screen, and now ho, 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 the circus. Honk, honk, honk. <laughs> yes, I am a circus clown for Halloween, and I know what you are thinking. Ho, ho, he is too handsome and dignified for such a thing as a circus clown, but that is why it is my costume. It is unexpected. Ho, ho, who would ever think of me as a clown? No one. Ho, 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 ho. Ole. So, I am here to talk to you today about International Artists Day and what it means to be an artist. Now, listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. Anyone can be an artist. See? Even if your art is making fashionable clothes or writing stories or making delicious works of cuisine like our good friend Bear, anyone who creates is an artist. Now, we're going to show you a few examples of art from our favorite artist in residence, Lynn. That's right. Not only does Lynn know how to do the classics like sketching and painting and sculpting, Lynn also knows how to make costumes and work with makeup and make fabulous entertaining videos like myself. Ho ho ho! Ole! So, without further ado, let us take a look at some of Lynn's art that she has done on her device. Ho ho! Ole!
Oh, was that not impressive? Yes, Si Lin is quite talented. But as I was saying, there are many kinds of artistry in the world. And not only is Lin an artist when it comes to drawing, she is also an artist when it comes to creation. Yes, in this next video, you will see Lin as a creeper from the famous game Minecraft. Yes, I do not know if you are familiar with Minecraft. I am not. I do not play. My hands cannot reach the controls properly. But Lin is familiar with Minecraft. And not only did she hand paint, see her very own mask and create her very own artist outfit. Yes, artistry, costumes are art as well. Not only that, she created a funny and entertaining video. So let's see more of the ways that our fabulous artist in residence has arted. Not to be confused with farted. <laughs> Amazing! See, she is so talented! Then last but not least, not only is Lynn talented with painting masks and making costumes and putting together videos, she is also very, 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 very good with makeup. Makeup is also a form of art. You do not believe me? Just look at this next video! Okay, look, we both said a lot of things that you're going to regret. But I think we can put our differences behind us. For science. You monster. That was amazing! Did you see that? She took the video game footage and the sound and she created her very own costume of a robot from the game Portal. Yes, see, she is Gladys. And if you do not know what that is, you should play that game because it is super, super fun and she did such a good job. Yes, not only did she not directly recreate and turn herself into a robot, she was inspired by it and created a look from the idea. That is what artists do. They are inspired by the world around them and they create. So, without further ado, I challenge you this International Artist Day to go forth and create. It doesn't matter what it is. Create a, a different kind of sandwich or go and create a new outfit. Create some fabulous costume for Halloween. Create a picture. Carve a pumpkin. That's artistry too. It doesn't matter what you do. Just go and art like the greats do. Oh, oh, oh. oh well, thank you, Juan Tiburon. Those were fascinating. I had no idea art could encompass so many topics. And I had no idea Arlene was so talented. My goodness, what a talented child. Oh, I mean, maybe not as talented as a uh, local news anchor, but then who is? <laughs> okay, next up, we shall go to our good friends Wolf and Buddy, who will teach us how to howl at Howl at the Moon Night. <laughs> All right, over to you, Wolf. Thank you, Irma Jean. Hello, everybody. I am Wolf, and I'm going to teach you how to lead a howl with my good friend Buddy. Now, uh, Buddy? Buddy, where are you, Buddy? Hello, Wolf. What, what are you dressed as? I'm a beautiful ballerina dancing in the sugar plum suite. Okay, okay. Well, all right then. I mean, I suppose a self-respecting wolf could be a ballerina, because why not? Well, what about you then, buddy? No, you're a buddy. Right, I mean friend. Okay, well, I am Granny, because like in the story Little Red Riding Hood, right, there's the, the wolf dresses as Granny. <laughs> Have you not heard that one? No, I've heard it. I just think it's a bit insensitive to wolves is all. What? Why? Well, the wolf is the bad guy, you see. Well, no, I know, but I'm, I'm, it's... Okay, whatever. All right, shall we go lead this howl? All right, buddy, let's do it. Yeah. Okay, come on, Steve. Okay, so the first thing you need to know when you're doing a howl is that you gotta throw your head back. Right, buddy? Right, I thought I thought I was Steve now, but whatever. Okay, so let's throw our heads back and practice. Good, now we're gonna do it with an actual howl. Now when you're howling, you wanna let the sound come from your diaphragm, which is right underneath your lungs. So you don't wanna push with your throat. No, that would be bad because then you could damage your voice. Exactly. So you gotta throw back your head and then you just kinda open up that whole space from your lips to your gut. And you just let out a good ow but you really want to like put your diaphragm into it yeah you got to support it you don't want to you don't want to be lazy there and then you just throw it up and then put your lips together so they make a good ooh face yeah like you want to go ooh that's right so here we go one two three ooh ooh 
Oh no, I lost my flowers. Oh, that's all right. Here we go. We're gonna do it again. Ready? Oh, oh. Huh, I guess the neighborhood dogs don't wanna join in. But why don't you join in at home? Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, 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 oh. If you want to get real fancy, you can throw with your... Hey, there we go. We're starting to help. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Oh, thank you, Wolf and Buddy, Steve, for telling us how to howl and for showing us so wonderfully. You even got another canine brother to join in. Oh, how delightful. I cannot wait to go out on Howl at the Moon Night and give it a shot myself. I... I don't think I did that right. Hmm. Anyway, next up, we go to tell spooky stories with Dragon at a storytelling party in celebration of National Tell a Story Day. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spooky Storytime with Dragon. I'm here to give you nightmares and make your worst dreams come true. <laughs> I didn't know this was going to be scary. I thought this was just a dress-up party. Yeah, bear, like dressing up for Halloween. I just thought it was fancy dress. That's why I wore my bow tie. Ugh, oh, bear. Oh, well, I for one cannot wait. I do so love to be titillated. <laughs> it sounds like a weird word, but really it just means to get all spooky and ghost bumply. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Well, I for one, <laughs> Prince Tigermere, I can't wait. I think scary stories are fun as long as you know they're not real. <laughs> and you didn't, you didn't bring that creepy puppet, did you, Dragon? <laughs> the creepy puppet? Would I do that? Of course I would. Here she is, the creepy puppet. But it's okay, because she's a ghost for Halloween. <laughs> All right, to the story. Once upon a time, there was a little bear named Perdita. Ooh, spooky bear, spooky bear. Anyway, she went into the woods because, of course she would, because bears live in the woods. Am I right, Bear? I mean, I mostly live in the kitchen. <laughs> okay, so while she was in the woods, she stumbled upon a spooky cabin. <gasps> and what was in the cabin, you ask? Nobody asked that. Well, you should have. What was in the cabin was a cabinet. Is, is that where the word cabinet comes? comes from from cabin oh tiger really you have to get nerdy right now we're telling spooky stories sorry okay so she tried to open the cabinet but it was locked she tried a little harder she jiggled the handle and popped open and what did she see ah! what are you guys doing uh telling scary stories you want to come listen Yeah, that seems right. Hmm. Anyway, so where was I? I do believe she had just opened the cabinet in the cabin. <laughs> oh, thank you, Irma Jean. So anyway, she opens the cabinet. And what does she find? What? I don't know. Let me tell you. She finds snacks. Oh boy. This is not as spooky as I expected. You don't understand. These snacks were made. Well, let me not tell you that first. What I'm going to tell you is that these snacks looked like delicious European chocolate, British chocolate, and her favorite of all were in there, mall teasers. Ooh, I know. But when she popped one in her mouth, it didn't taste right. She gagged, she choked, she clutched her throat. <coughs> I'm dying, she said. Oh no, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. She looked at the packaging. These were not European mall teasers at all. They were made in Canada. What, no reaction? I don't think that's as scary as you think it is, Dragon. Ugh, trust me. Canadian Maltesers are nowhere near as good as British Maltesers. Um, I will take your word for it, Dragon. Well, you should, because I totally know what I'm talking about. She's right, you know, the British ones are better. Thank you, Bear. Ugh, you know what, this is harder than it looks. Maybe you guys should try telling the story. Oh, no, 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 thank you. Uh, no, I'm good. Ugh, you guys are no fun at all. Whatever, story's over. Um, she ate the Canadian chocolate. She decided, fine, it's okay. And then she lived a happy long life and died in her bed surrounded by her grandchildren. The end. 
Okay, dragon. She's she's a little weird, you guys. Um, maybe I'll tell a story. Ooh, yes, please, tiger. Once upon a time, there was a hobbit. Ugh, no, no groaning. This is gonna be great. And the hobbit went to the library. And when he got to the library, the Dewey Decimal Catalog was all mixed up and he couldn't find his book on cooking. Oh no, I know, Bear, I know. And everything went wrong. And before he knew it, the IRS had come and audited him and he was cast out on the street and he had to go all the way to Mount Mortar. And, and he didn't get it because he didn't have the right forms. And it was terrible. <laughs> oh, Y'all, this is even worse than my story. Whatever, dragon. At least it doesn't have to do with Canadian Maltesers. <sighs> oh dear, okay. Never send a tiger and dragon to do a princess's job, obviously. Whoa, Irma Jean, rude. Yeah, I'm called for. Okay, I'm sorry. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess who lived in a shining castle. She had her very own puppet news station. I know, she was so accomplished. Oh boy. Huh, shush. Anyway, one day, she went to the studio, and it was pitch black, completely dark, and she went, where is everyone? It is Saturday, is it not? She checked her watch, her calendar. Indeed, it was the right time, the right day, and the right place, but where was everyone? So she crept quietly through the studio, trying the light switches, but none of them would turn on, and she was so afraid. She thought she heard a squeaking noise behind her, but when she turned, nothing was there. Perhaps it was rats. Perhaps the phantom of the news station. Dun, dun, dun. But when she looked closer, she went, and on the doors was a sign that said, Puppet News Cancelled! Oh, no! Oh, spooky terror, terror, no! It was the worst day anyone could ever imagine. <laughs> nope. What? Nope. Sorry, still not good. Ugh. Okay, none of you are good at this either, so you can't judge me. Maybe I can try. Ugh, fine. Okay, okay, so I can try and tell one. Um, I haven't really done this before, but uh, I'll give it a shot. So, once upon a time, there was a very handsome bear who worked in a kitchen, naturally. <laughs> of course, bear. Thank you, Ermagee. And uh, he was a very generous bear. He made treats and everybody enjoyed them, and that made him happy. But he often longed that he could get treats of his own. But no one ever would give them to him. He would cook them, and people would steal them away. And he was so sad. But then one day, someone brought him a whole bag full of peanut brittle. And he was so excited. Except it turned out it wasn't peanut brittle. It was almond brittle. And the bear was deathly allergic to almonds. And he choked and he gasped. And then he got out his EpiPen. And he was okay. But then... The next day, he was walking through the woods, and he tripped on a stone, and he fell, and he died. The end. Well, it wasn't too scary, but it was terribly sad. I know. Can you imagine having an almond allergy? That sounds terrible. Almonds are delicious. Yeah, that's what we were talking about there. I mean, I guess he got closer than the rest of us. Aw, huh, thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's enough story time for one day. Okay, well, thanks for inviting me. <laughs> See you guys later. Hmm, almond brittle. Hmm. Well, that was an interesting party. Some of the stories were better than others. Obviously, mine was the best. I think we all know. <laughs> Wink. Not that you can see me. Oh, hello. <laughs> My eyes are under here. <laughs> There we are. Anyway, next up is Mischief Night. Now, Mischief Night is the night before Halloween, and traditionally that's when all the spirits and, do and ghosts come out to work mischief in the human realm. Of course, we know this is just superstition and silly nonsense, but we think it's fun to cause mischief of our own. Now, we don't go in for mean or malicious mischief. No, we believe in fun, silly sorts of mischief that, that make people smile. So, without further ado, we're going to talk to our cast crew of Puppet News to see what sorts of things they like to do for Mischief Night. Oh, hello. So what I like to do for Mischief Night is to sneak into the dolphin tank at SeaWorld and pretend to be one of the dolphins. I do tricks. <laughs> I bounce balls on my nose and jump through hoops and I go... 
and everybody believes it. <laughs> except for all the dolphins. But you know, that means they can take a night off. So I fool the audience with my mischief and the dolphins are quite grateful. <laughs> Holy. Hello everyone. So for mischief night, I like to go out with my pack and we like to run around the woods and we sneak up on the deer and we tickle their haunches and yell boo. <laughs> they don't like it so much, but you know, it brings us closer together as friends and it makes them happy when they realise we're not trying to eat them. <laughs> oh, good times. Hi, everybody. So uh, for me, the Elf King Tigermere, <laughs> um, for Mischief Night, I like to, uh, well, I like to go to my local library because that's where I like to hang out sometimes. And, uh, well, sometimes I like to rearrange the books in the math section so they're all in the wrong spot. <laughs> and somebody who's looking for stuff on Pythagoras gets stuff on Pi instead. <laughs> and then they, <laughs> their math equations don't work out the way they want to do. <laughs> Oh, but then I feel really bad and I put it back because nothing's worse than having your math not check out. So uh, sometimes I'll, I'll put the books back and then I'll, I'll stay and help people with their homework because uh, I'm, I'm really just not very good at mischief. But, but that's okay, right? I mean, I, I'm still a fun guy. Yeah. For mischief day, I like to make people think that I'm crazy. I'm like, hello, I'm a ghostly puppet. Ooh. <laughs> and everybody's like, wow, you're being super freaky. And I'm like, no, I'm not a freaky. I'm just a spirit of a friendly ghost. <laughs> and it freaks people out. But that's okay, because they know I'm dramatic and over the top. And frankly, I think they've come to expect it over the years. It's like performance art. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So I am a wolf, as you know. And so for, for Mischief Night, I like to pretend that I'm really as big and bad as I seem. <laughs> right? So what I do is... <laughs> I look for little girls walking through the woods to visit their grannies. <laughs> and then I sneak ahead and I knock on the door and I say, hey, let me in. And when the granny, I mean, all the grannies know me. We're good friends. We all play a uh, pinochle together. And I say, hey, let me in. I'm going to, I'm going to wear your clothes and hide in your bed. And we're going to see if I can fool your grandkid. <laughs> and they're like, oh, what a great idea. I'm like, right. And like nine times out of 10, the kid doesn't even realize I'm not their grandmother. They're like, oh, what big ears you have. I'm like, right? What kind of old lady has ears like this? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <laughs> oh, kids are kind of dumb sometimes, but you know what? They love their grannies and that's what really matters. <laughs> Hi guys. So for me, um, well, my favorite kind of mischief is I like to make cookies or goodies of some kind and then I wrap them up really tight and I sneak over to my neighbor's house and then I put the goodies on their porch and ring the doorbell and then run away. <laughs> they never know who sent the cookies. They have no idea where the goodies came from and they're so confused and it's so cute. Oh, my neighbors are just adorable. It makes them so happy and I think that's what mischief is really all about. Oh, thank you, everyone, for sharing your ideas of mischief. For me, I think I shall go by Norma Jean newsletter <laughs> for Mischief Night just to throw people off. Already they're so confused from when I did that last year. Is it Irma? Is it Norma? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> All right, so now that we've discussed our holidays, we go over to Dragon for our birthday shout-outs. Hey everybody, so Dragon here to do our birthday shout outs with my good friend, Bear the Ghost. Hello, my little bear puppet is here to help. Yes, that's right, to help and to haunt. <laughs> oh, she's so silly. So anyway, the first birthday coming up is Aunt Lori. Now she's not my aunt, but she's Cassie's aunt and uh, Lynn's great aunt. And she is great, isn't she, Bear? Yes, she is quite wonderful, very lovely and athletic and a super cool mom and grandma. Aw, that's so nice, Barry. How do you know about her? Oh, I haunt her all the time. Oh, that's a little creepy, but okay. Here is your birthday shout out, Aunt Lori. Happy birthday, Aunt Lori. You are an amazing, kind-hearted, talented lady. All of us in your family are lucky to know you and love you. Aw, that was so nice. Don't you agree? 
so very nice. <laughs> All right, and then our next birthday shout out is for Anna. Now she is a super cool, super talented mom. She can cook, she can sing, she's just amazing, and she has triplets. Oh, sounds like Wonder Woman, right? I can't even imagine how she does it all. She is a boss babe. I tell you that right now. Yes, she is quite fabulous. I do love her so much. I often go over there just to smell her baking. Okay, once again, you're getting a little weird and crossing some boundaries. Sorry. Anna, you are one amazing lady. I hope you have a super wonderful birthday and that your hubby and kids are extra sweet to you. <laughs> And that's it for this week's birthday shout outs. Happy birthday. Upcoming birthdays. They're not all this next week. Some are in the week after because once again, we will not be here next week. <laughs> but happy birthday shout outs to Lori and Anna. You ladies are awesome. You are awesome. Have a wonderful holiday and do try to stay safe from those ghouls. Oh. All right. Hey, weirdo. Anyway, happy birthday. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. oh, thank you, dragon. And and your creepy puppet. You know, Dragon, you really should talk to someone. You're making us all very, very concerned. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> spooky dragon for spooky week, right? <laughs> Halloween is coming. I suppose if she's going to be unhinged, now is the time. <laughs> so thank you all so much for tuning in. I have been your host, Norma Jean Newsletter. <laughs> And I do hope you have a wonderful and safe Halloween holiday and spooky week leading up to it. We shall see you in two weeks when we are back with our next Puppet News update. Until then, toodaloo!